Jurassic Park, we were introduced to a member of Biosyn, a, the rival company of InGen. The man was named Lewis Dotson, who we would discover to be the man who hires Dennis Nedry to steal the dinosaur embryos in the first film. And while in the first novel, he would only play a minor role as a side villain for the story, the second novel would turn him into the primary villain. And with confirmation of Dotson making an ultimate return in Jurassic World Dominion, I thought we'd take a look at one of his scenes from the novel. Our story begins after Dotson and two Biosyn members, Howard King and George Bassetton, successfully um, arrive on Isla Sorna and st steal two Myosaur eggs. And after um, getting set up, they arrive at their next target, the Tyrannosaurus Rex nest. The Jeep Wrangler rolled slowly to a stop. Directly ahead, there was a wall of dense foliage, but through it they could see sunlight. Dotson sat in the car quietly, listening. He heard the sound of breathing. King, King turned and was about to speak, but Dotson held up his hand because he could hear the breathing of the dinosaur. It was a low, rumbling growl, almost like a purr. It was becoming. It was coming beyond the foliage of, ahead. It sounded like the biggest jungle cat he had ever said, and he felt a slight vibration, hardly anything, until he came closer, and he realized it was walking. King was staring forward in astonishment. His mouth hung open. Dotson glanced back at Basilton, who had his fingers gripping the seat with turning pale. A shadow moved across the ferns directly ahead. Judging by the sh shadow, the animal was 20 feet high and 40 feet long, with a large head, a tyrannosaur. Dodson hesitated, staring at the shadow. His heart was pounding in his chest. He considered going to the next tar target, but he was confident in the box and that it would work here too, just like it did with the Mayas. Let's get this over with. Give me the box. Is it charged? Batteries are charged, King said. Okay, we'll do exactly as the same as before. I'll go first, you two follow, and bring the eggs back to the car. Ready? Ready, Basilton said. But then King asked, what kind of dinosaur is that? It's a Tyrannosaurus. A Tyrannosaurus? King asked. It doesn't matter what it is, Dodson said irritably. Just follow the plan, like before. Everybody get ready. Wait a minute, Basilton. What if it doesn't work, King said, concernedly. We already know it works. Then B Basilton tried to calm King down. There was a rather curious fact about tyrannosaurs that um, a paleontologist named Rodson saying that um, th Tyrannosaurus' visual movement is like a frog's. He'll lose you if you don't move. Are you sure about that? That was the report, Basilton said. I don't see why we're rushing into this, nervously, King said. So what, Dodson said. You heard what George said. It's just a big frog. Let's get it done. Get out of the fucking car and don't slam the doors. Dodson was moving ahead very quickly and holding the black box like a gun in his hand. Basildon glanced over at King, who was deathly pale and sweating. He looked like he was on the verge of collapse. Basilton tried to comfort him, making sure that he was all right. Dodson gave a glance back and waved for them to hurry up. Basilton came up and then suddenly he saw the Tyrannosaur. No, there were two Tyrannosaurs. They stood on both sides of the mud mound, two adults, 20 feet high with their hind legs, powerful dark red and big vicious jaws. Like the Myasaurs, the animals stared at Dodson for a moment, giving it off a dumb stare, as if a mate to see an intruder. And just, just before... <laughs> Dodson lifted the box, pointed it at the animals, and immediately a continuous high-pitched shriek filled the clearing. The Tyrannosaurus roared in response and lowered their heads, extending their necks forward, snapping their jaws, preparing to attack. Oh, fuck, King said, but Dodson said cool, and he twisted the dial even further than it was. 
Basil then clapped his hands over the ear, and the shriek became higher, louder, and ears splitting. The response was immediate. The Tyrannosaurus stepped back as if they had received a physical blow. They ducked their heads, blinked their eyes rapidly, and they gave off um, painful shrieks of pain. And they tried to roar again, but it was weakly now, without conviction. And a terrible screaming was coming from the nest, which was from the babies. Dotson moved forward, pointed the box in the air directly at the animals. And when he came forward, the dinosaurs were back away, looking into the nest, then to Dotson. They swung their heads back and forth rapidly, trying to get the noise out of their ears. And then Dotson calmly adjusted the dial even further, and it was now ex beyond excruciating. Dodson climbed in the mud mound. Basselton and King scrambled up, following him. Basselton himself looked in the nest and found four molded white eggs and two young babies that were screaming due to the pain, looking like oversized turkeys. The two Tyrannosaurs were at the far clearing and held away and continued to stay away, held back by the sound. They stomped their feet in agitation, but they didn't come any closer. Get the eggs, Dodson shouted over the shriek. King stumbled down into the nest, grabbing the nearest egg, but then he fumbled with it, shaking in his hand, and he caught it in the air and lurched back, and then stepped on the leg of one of the babies, which screamed in fear and pain. The Tyrannosaur parents tried to come forward again in an instant to try and save their young. King hastily ran for the car. George, get the other egg, Dodson shouted, try, trying to make sure that he would follow. Basselton looked at the adult Tyrannosaurs, seeing the rage in their eyes, and he saw the jaws snap open with the fierceness he had never seen before, and he felt the sudden feeling of dread and that, and he realized that sound or no sound, these animals would not allow another person to enter their nest. King had been lucky, but George, now! I can't, Basselton said. You dumb fuck! Dotson, hold while holding the gun, began to climb down in the nest himself. But as he started, he twisted his body, and the battery plug pulled out of the box. The sound abruptly died. In the clearing, there was silence. The Tyrannosaurus shook their head a final time and roared. Basselton saw Dodson go rigidly still, his body frozen. Somehow he forced his own body to stay still. He forced his knees to stop trembling, His and he held his breath, and he waited. On the far side of the clearing, the Tyrannosaurus began to move towards them. Dodson watched the lead Tyrannosaurus come towards him. For such big animals, they were still very cautious. One of the parents looked... After its young, while well, the other came closer towards them. Perhaps, though it didn't attack them instantly, perhaps, perhaps it couldn't see, see them. Of course, the wars of the approaching dinosaurs were terrifying. Dotson didn't dare glance or even move. He was betting that Basilton was probably peeing his pants right now, but he knew as long as he stayed still, he wouldn't move. Standing stiffly, he tried to... He tried to slowly move his body to get the plug in and turn it back on, and then, once it was on, he would be fine. The Tyrannosaurus was very close now. Dotson could smell the rotten odor of the carnivore. It was standing right by Basilton. Dotson slowly turned his head, making sure not to make sudden movements, to watch. Bas Basilton stood entirely s still, and the Tyrannosaurus closed and looked, came close, but and snorted at Basilton and raised his head again as if perplexed. You really can't see him, Dutton thought. But the Tyrannosaurus then bellowed a fierce just sound and bent over, for with his huge head down, the jaws opened and closed, Basilton stared straight forward, not blinking, and with the huge flaring nostrils, and then the Tyrannosaurus nudged Basilton tentatively with snout. And Dodson realized that the animal could see him, and the Tyrannosaur swung its head laterally, striking Basilton on his side and knocking him to the ground. Basilton yelled, You son of a bitch! Just before the head came down, jaws wide and closed on him. The movement was gentle, 
almost delicate, but in the instant there was a high pitch scream coming from Basilton, and Dotson realized that there was something in the Tyrannosaurus's jaws, and he realized that it was Basilton's arm, and hung freely with a with the metal band of his wrist watch glinting in the in the sunlight beneath the teeth of the Tyrannosaurus's huge eye. Basilton's scream was endless. It just didn't stop until he was bitten again and silence. Dodson ran. He ran straight back for the jeep. The Tyrannosaurus roaring full force and he dropped the battery pump but pack, but he didn't give a damn. He just wanted to get out of there and saw King Lit waiting in the jeep, fence and pen pale. He got in the car, started the engine and drove away where the Basilton King at. Didn't make it. What do you mean? I mean he didn't fucking make it. Stopped and yelled and slammed the car in gear. gear. The jeep dro drove off, bouncing up the hill, and he heard the Tyrannosaurus bellowing after him. Maybe we should get rid of this, King said. Don't you fucking dare. Just before they could start an argument, King screamed, No! Suddenly, one of the Tyrannosaurus burst in the trees in the, from the road ahead. The animal stood there, waiting for it, for the car to come towards it. Oh, turn around, turn around, but did Dodson didn't. You're, you're gonna get us killed, King screamed. Shut the fuck up, Dodson said as he slapped King across the face. This was dangerous, but he had to stay focused. They were in a fucking jeep with a fucking cloth cup and they were gonna get killed and- <laughs> Behind them, the Tyrannos- the second Tyrannosaurus came charging up the road towards them. He looked forward and saw the second Tyrannosaurus bearing down on them. They were trapped. He twisted the wheel in panic and the car ran off the road, crashing backward into dense underbrush and surrounding trees. He felt a jolting impact. The rear car dropped sickeningly, and he realized the back wheels were hanging on the edge. And he gunned the engine frantically, but the wheels spun just spun in the air. It was hopeless, and slowly the car sank backwards, then went flying, and he heard the Tyrannosaurus roaring. Dotson flung the door open and jumped out into space. He plunged in the foliage, and then, after coming to a complete stop, he felt a sharp pain in his forehead saw stars and fell into darkness with the Tyrannosaurus was continuing to roar ferociously. Now since Dotson w wasn't in Sp Spielberg's film adaptation, this scene would not be used in the film. However, surprisingly, Basilton's death from the T-Rex would actually be reused for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom for the character of Ken Wheatley, who was killed by the Indoraptor specifically the arm rip being off before death. How, however, as I mentioned earlier, with the confirmation of Lewis Dotson and also the company Biosyn making a return for Dominion, I personally think that we're going to be seeing many of these scenes with Dotson implemented in the film. And maybe this one too. But what do you guys think? Do you think this scene has a chance of appearing in Jurassic World Dominion? And if not, is this still one of your favorite scenes from the Lost World novel? If so, why? I'd appreciate that in the comments. But anyway, guys, that's where we're going to have to end this video. If you've enjoyed it, I'd appreciate the like. And if you want to join the hunt and help support this channel, hit the subscribe button. Be safe. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.